What is the most critical step in phlebotomy to ensure patient safety? A. Wearing gloves. B. Identifying the patient correctly. C. Using the correct tube. D. Applying a tourniquet correctly. Answer, B. Correct patient identification is crucial to prevent errors in specimen collection and misdiagnosis. Which tube color is used for collecting a blood sample for a lactic acid test? A. Red. B. Light blue. C. Green. D. Gray. Answer, D. Lactic acid testing requires a gray top tube containing sodium fluoride to prevent glycolysis. A phlebotomist must collect a sample for a PT-INR test. Which tube should be used? A. Green. B. Light blue. C. Lavender. D. Gold. Answer, B. PT slash INR, per thrombin time slash international normalized ratio, tests require a light blue top tube with sodium citrate as an anticoagulant. Which of the following is a potential complication of drawing blood from an arm affected by a mastectomy? A. Hematoma. B. Lymphedema. C. Nerve damage. D. Hemoconcentration. Answer, B. Lymphedema occurs due to the removal of lymph nodes, making the affected arm vulnerable to fluid buildup. What is the appropriate action if a patient experiences syncope during venipuncture? A. Immediately remove the needle and lower their head. B. Continue the procedure until the draw is complete. C. Place the patient in an upright position. D. Ignore and proceed. Answer, A. Syncope, fainting, requires immediate needle removal and positioning the patient to prevent injury. How should an arterial blood gas, ABG, sample be handled after collection? A. Kept at room temperature. B. Placed in an ice slurry. C. Stored in a warm environment. D. Centrifuged immediately. Answer, B. ABG samples must be placed in an ice slurry to prevent changes in gas levels and ensure accurate results. Which of the following conditions requires a basal state blood draw? A. Postprandial glucose. B. Lipid profile. C. Coagulation panel. D. Hemoglobin A1c. Answer, B. Lipid profiles require fasting to ensure accurate measurements of cholesterol and triglycerides. Which vein should be avoided for routine venipuncture due to its proximity to arteries and nerves? A. Median cubital. B. Cephalic. C. Basilic. D. Dorsal hand. Answer, C. The basilic vein runs close to the brachial artery and median nerve, increasing the risk of complications. If a blood culture bottle is not filling properly, what should the phlebotomist do first? A. Discard the sample and start over. B. Check the position of the needle. C. Shake the bottle. D. Add more blood manually. Answer, B. Needle positioning is often the cause of poor blood flow. Repositioning may help without restarting the draw. What is the primary cause of hemoconcentration during venipuncture? A. Using a small needle. B. Leaving the tourniquet on too long. C. Drawing from a vein too quickly. D. Mixing tubes too aggressively. Answer, B. Prolonged tourniquet application, one minute, causes plasma to leak, leading to hemoconcentration. Which test is most affected by hemolysis? A. White blood cell count. B. Potassium. C. Hemoglobin A1c. D. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Answer, B. Potassium is released from red blood cells during hemolysis, leading to falsely elevated results. 
Which of the following requires a warm collection and transport? A. Ammonia. B. Cold agglutinins. C. Blood cultures. D. ABG. Answer, B. Cold agglutinins require warming to 37 degrees Celsius to prevent agglutination before testing. A patient refuses a blood draw due to religious beliefs. What should the phlebotomist do? A. Proceed with the draw. B. Notify the physician or nurse. C. Convince the patient to comply. D. Document and leave without informing anyone. Answer, B. Patient autonomy must be respected. Notifying the appropriate staff ensures proper documentation and alternative care plans. What action should a phlebotomist take when drawing from a patient with fragile veins? A. Use a 16-gauge needle. B. Use a syringe or butterfly needle. C. Apply excessive pressure. D. Use a tourniquet for over one minute. Answer, B. Syringe or butterfly needles provide gentler suction, reducing vein collapse in fragile patients. Which type of patient should have a capillary puncture instead of venipuncture? A. Patients with difficult veins. B. Patients in shock. C. Patients on anticoagulant therapy. D. Patients with polycythemia. Answer, A. Capillary punctures are recommended for patients with small, fragile, or hard-to-locate veins. What is the correct order of draw when collecting multiple tubes? A. Red, blue, lavender, green. B. Blue, red, green, lavender. C. Green, blue, lavender, red. D. Lavender, blue, red, green. Answer. B. The correct order is light blue, coagulation, red, serum, green, heparin, and lavender, EDTA. What should be done if a hematoma forms during a blood draw? A. Continue the draw. B. Apply more pressure. C. Remove the needle and apply pressure. D. Elevate the arm and ignore it. Answer. C. Stopping the draw immediately and applying pressure minimizes bruising and swelling. Which of the following is the best site for arterial blood collection? A. Radial artery. B. Brachial artery. C. Femoral artery. D. Ulnar artery. Answer, A. The radial artery is the preferred site for ABG collection due to its accessibility and collateral circulation. A phlebotomist enters a room to collect a sample, and the patient has an four in both arms. Where should the sample be taken? A. From either arm below the four. B. From a hand vein below the four. C. From the four sight. D. No blood draw should be done. Answer. B. Blood should be drawn from below the four sight to avoid dilution with four fluids. Which test is performed first in a patient suspected of sepsis? A. CBC. B. Blood culture. C. CRP. D. ESR. Answer, B. Blood cultures must be collected first to identify bacterial infections before antibiotics are administered. What should a phlebotomist do if a patient has a fistula? A. Draw blood from the fistula. B. Use the opposite arm. C. Draw from a vein above the fistula. D. Use a capillary stick instead. Answer. B. Blood should never be drawn from a fistula used for dialysis. The opposite arm must be used. Which tube is used for lead testing? A. Light blue. B. Royal Blue. C. Lavender. D. Gray. Answer, B. Royal Blue tubes are specially designed for trace element testing, including lead, PB. 
How long should a phlebotomist wait before reattempting venipuncture on the same arm? A. Immediately. B. 30 seconds. C. 1 to 2 minutes. D. 5 to 10 minutes. Answer. D. Waiting 5 to 10 minutes allows the vein to recover, preventing trauma and hematoma formation. Which of the following would cause a false increase in potassium levels? A. Insufficient sample volume. B. Hemolysis. C. Using a butterfly needle. D. Using a heparinized tube. Answer. B. Hemolysis releases intracellular potassium, leading to falsely elevated levels. Which of the following requires a chilled specimen? A. Bilirubin. B. Cryoglobulins. C. Lactic acid. D. Vitamin B12. Answer. C. Lactic acid samples must be placed on ice to prevent metabolic changes. What is the minimum time a phlebotomist should wash hands if contaminated with blood? A. 10 seconds. B. 20 seconds. C. 30 seconds. D. 1 minute. Answer. C. 30 seconds ensures proper decontamination after exposure to blood-borne pathogens. What is the primary reason for inverting tubes after collection? A. To prevent clotting or hemolysis. B. To mix the blood and improve test accuracy. C. To reduce bacterial contamination. D. To cool the specimen. Answer. A. Inverting tubes prevents clotting in anticoagulant tubes and ensures proper mixing. A patient begins seizing during blood collection. What should the phlebotomist do? A. Continue drawing to finish quickly. B. Remove the needle immediately and call for help. C. Hold the patient's arm down. D. Place a tongue depressor in their mouth. Answer. B. Removing the needle prevents injury, and calling for help ensures proper medical response. Which of the following requires a fasting sample? A. Hemoglobin A1c. B. Complete blood count, CBC. C. Fasting blood glucose. D. Prothrombin time, PT. Answer. C. Fasting blood glucose requires the patient to avoid food for at least 8 hours. A newborn screening test should be collected from which site? A. Heel. B. Finger. C. Forearm. D. Scalp. Answer. A. Heel punctures are used for newborns because their veins are too small for routine venipuncture. What should a phlebotomist do if a patient has an four in both arms? A. Draw from above the four. B. Ask a nurse to stop the four and draw from the same arm. C. Perform a finger stick collection. D. Ask a nurse or physician for guidance. Answer. D. Blood should not be drawn from an arm with an active four unless approved by a physician. What is the most common cause of hemolysis in blood samples? A. Drawing blood too slowly. B. Shaking tubes instead of inverting. C. Using a tourniquet for too long. D. Using a needle that is too small. Answer. D. A small needle can rupture red blood cells, causing hemolysis. Why should a bilirubin sample be protected from light? A. Light increases bilirubin levels. B. Light decreases bilirubin levels. C. Light prevents hemolysis. D. Light activates the anticoagulant. Answer. B. Light breaks down bilirubin, leading to inaccurate test results. A patient reports feeling dizzy after venipuncture. What should the phlebotomist do first? A. Offer the patient water. B. Help the patient lie down or sit with their head between their knees. 
C. Leave to get a nurse. D. Continue with the next patient. Answer, B. This position prevents fainting and increases blood flow to the brain. What is the best way to confirm patient identity before a blood draw? A. Ask the patient's name and compare it with the test requisition. B. Check the patient's ID band and ask for full name and DOB. C. Ask the patient's family member to confirm identity. D. Ask the patient to write their name. Answer, B. Verifying the patient's ID band and confirming with them ensures accuracy.